Excuse me? Where did you live under socialism? Uh, in the Soviet Union, I was born in the city called Leningrad, lived there until 1973. Uh, and you guys purchased me from the Soviet Union. You paid one million tons of wheat for about 50,000 Jews. So if you will divide one million tons of wheat by 50,000 Jews, you will find out that you paid for me 20 tons of wheat wholesale price. And I think that you got a bargain. Well, being that you're here crusading, it seems crusading for democracy instead of socialism, in fact, opposing socialism, is that the purpose of your being, being here today or why? I actually do not like democracy. I, what I do like, I like the, I like what you guys call here republic. It's totally different idea. Democracy and when two wolves and one sheep or pig or whatever it is, decide by, by honest voting to against one whom to have, um, you know, for, 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 for food. And, uh, yeah. All the Wonderful. Yeah. And okay, but it's, it's, when I say democracy, I mean free society. What will happen if the Democrats uh, gain power and th the socialistic Democrats gain power in this uh, society? I see several things that remind me very much of the Soviet Union. First of all, right now, in the comings of Democrats, even, we see a total suppression of. of freedom of, of speech, uh, total suppression of freedom of, of assembly. Uh, we come here and we, we, you know, all together here, but try to go to a synagogue or try to go to any other place, a restaurant or whatever. You will find out that you cannot do it, you'll be fined. You even cannot invite more than six friends and, and somehow if somebody from the city comes, they can fine you or even take you to prison because of that. So it's, it's an attempt to, to teach American society the rules of the prison. I don't like it. And number two, uh, I read very carefully all 643 pages of the bold ideas that Biden put on his page, uh, with about 2,000 pages that, that they're kind of mentioned there that this is the basis for, for, for the bold ideas. And it's absolutely terrible because it brings uh, what we call the well-developed socialism into our life including a right to uh, in in the suburb where, where where you have your house and you you bought it for a lot of money because you wanted to live in a safe and nice neighborhood suddenly they decided and they will do it they decided to build multi-house dwellings with people low income huh? low income low income uh, multi it doesn't really matter low or not but because now your property goes down. But on top of everything, they want to bring their pedophiles and people who were released yesterday from prison and so-called mothers with many children from the same husbands. I don't think that I like the idea of my kids or my grandchildren in this case being around. That's why we left the city and went to suburbs. Let's talk about uh, intimidation, uh, not necessarily from the government, but from society from uh, uh, people who, who differ or, or challenge the government party line. We're seeing it now. We've seen it, it during the Obama years, and we, we're seeing it now enforced uh, through uh, uh, professional and social discrimination. Is this something that becomes stronger when uh, socialistic Democrats take power? 11 years ago, a friend of mine who is working in Hollywood uh, called me. I also spent many, many years doing movie in the movie business. Uh, he called me and said, Leon, uh, I am sorry, but I have to severe our relations on LinkedIn. I said, OK, no problem. Why? He said, you see, uh, today they are not only judging you by your professional skills, but they, they also go and try to find out whom you are friends with. And you are so outspoken that I will not get any work in Hollywood. It was already 11 years ago, 2009. Now, today, you at school, at university, uh, in an entertainment business, if God forbid you say something like you're for Trump or you're against socialism or you're against something, you're practically kicked up from your work or they, they make your life miserable and you have to quit yourself. So it is really terrible. It's even worse than it was in the Soviet Union. 
how, how is it worse here than there? Uh, in the Soviet Union, we all, in my, my time, not in the time of my parents' grandparents, but my time, we, we didn't like socialism, we didn't like communism, we didn't like Bolsheviks. So at least at work and at home, we were free to talk. Uh, to talk about how we don't like it. Today you cannot do it because like in the early days of KGB, you talk to your friend, you say something, and he runs to KGB and he tells them that you said so and so. So today I know many situations where co-workers, they send little letters, anonymous letters, that this person said that and that and he is for Trump. Well, and that's with Trump in power. Imagine what would what could things be like if Trump is not in power and in, in, in having some uh, uh, a federal authority uh, in the courts. Sorry, didn't hear. I said that, that's that's how bad it is with a Republican administration. How bad could it be with a Democrat or socialistic Democrat administration? Uh, in Republican administration, uh, you have to say something. In the, uh, with the Democratic administration, they have all the records from NSA. We know that they record all the records. Anytime you want to go and to, let's say, be elected to some place, they can dig what you said some time ago, find it out, and use it against you. So what I, what I see is a total suppression of freedom of speech and other freedoms that we have and practically going into one-party rule. Well, it'll be one-party rule in, in terms of government, but even in society? When you have one-party rule in terms of government, society has to restructure itself. <laughs> so as a writer yourself? I'm a professional marketer. I do it. I did it in Israel in politics. I did it in, in Russia in movies, theater. I had my theater company in Israel and in Los Angeles. So, yeah, I did practically everything that you can do in writing, producing, etc. Yeah. What's the likelihood that the Democrats will cheat the count? Will cheat? I think that exactly the same likelihood that they are not uh, can you imagine that not allowing to pe people to know what happened or what happens with the news? So if you if you think that they cheat with that and they censor your news, then they can cheat with the votes as well. Of course, now Democrats who don't uh, watch Fox News or any other uh, conservative media, they would never know that there was a story that's being hidden from them. Of course, that's, that's the whole idea. Again, it's like old Soviet Union. You don't know anything. They, they control your ear, your nose, your eyes. And if you don't know anything, though you, cannot, you cannot count on that or, or before that or against that, period. It doesn't exist. Is it similar to the former Soviet Union in that regard? I think it's even worse. We never had a situation where we didn't have any channel of communication. Right now, I post my videos, I posted like about 600 videos in Russian and about half of that in English, and big percentage of that was taken off of the both YouTube and Facebook, and I ever said any word that I do not have 100% facts checked. You never said anything that, that, that didn't have support? Right. And, and many of my videos and many of, of my talks and articles, etc., were taken off either temporarily or forever from Facebook, YouTube. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, Twitter, which is disgusting at this moment. They're all disgusting, and uh, I think th they'll probably censor this video even w without my having said that. But. Um, I, one final question. You, you define yourself as a Soviet Jew. Did the Soviet Jews call themselves that in the 60s and 70s? Uh, yes. It's yeah. not an American or an English language label? Oh, I, I am a Jew from the Soviet Union or Soviet Jew or whatever. Uh, actually, we, we didn't say Soviet Jew inside of the country. We were saying Jew, period. But uh, when you're outside of the country, yes, we called ourselves Soviet Jew. How much awareness is there in the Soviet Jewish community of the Los Angeles Americans who would demonstrate and protest against the Soviet Union to pressure them to release the Jews who wanted to leave? 
Well, look, uh, judging by my video, uh, usually seen by between 100 to 300,000 people, Jews in the United States of America, they react good. No, no. How aware are the, are the Soviet Jews of what we did on their behalf? Oh, very much, yeah. very much. Yes, uh, we were we were personally. I was friends with Frumkin and Zef Yaroslavsky, who were one of the you know two people who were waiting for that. And actually, because of Sai Frumkin, I began to write articles and talk and took part in politics, because he complained that Soviet Jews who came across the Soviet Union are not active. I said, I'll try to compensate for that. So he, that was when you were here already. Yeah, he was my godfather in this regard. Did he? Uh how influential was he and Zev and that movement, you think, in... Uh, Zev not, because he went to a party that we didn't support, and plus he was already a, a person who worked for the government, but, but Frumkin was writing a lot of articles and talks, giving talks in both English and, and Russian, uh, so he was very influential here, yes. But aside from you, how well known was what they did among the, the Soviet Jewish community? Uh, I think very much, yeah, people know very well, yes. How about in the newer generation, the younger generation? I uh, cannot tell. Uh, we, we are guilty of not, not really working with the gen next generation because we, we thought that American school is different from the Soviet school, so you don't, don't have to, to do, uh, I'm sorry, all, all the talks with children about the Soviet Union and, and how, how good it is, how bad it is, etc. So we assumed wrong and one of the things that we're starting doing, starting uh, November 4th, is we start education programs for at least our children. I mean for the generation of our children, in Russian and English, but we're starting educating that how to, how to be creative, how, how to be creative, how to understand when people lying to you, how to judge, what core values you have to have in order to have. Because if you don't have your core values, you cannot judge. There is no judgment. So when you build the core values and build this mind that asks questions, you already build a wall against the propaganda machine that was built 30 years ago by Democrats here. The school will be a cultural school or religious school? Oh, it's not a school. It will be internet-based courses and we're already putting together a group of people who are doing that and it will be done very quickly. But will uh, American activism be a part of that? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We think that this country has such an unbelievable history that our kids were not taught at school. I have now ch four grandchildren when they're coming from schools, grandchildren from, you know, from three, four, age 22 and two of them at, at elementary school right now, I am every time that I meet with them and ask what's going on in the school, and I don't ask about math, etc., history, what they're telling me is unbelievably false. And the first thing that they taught is Trump is bad. Why Trump is bad? Oh, he's very bad. Republicans are terrible, etc. So this is elementary school. I have to go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Pleasure.